Algebra 1, 11.2a, non-negative radicands. Non-negative just means it's not negative, right? A radicand is the number that's under the radical sign. That's the square root symbol. So the 25 is the radicand. You know, the first known printing of the radical sign was in a book called Die Koss. It was published in 1525 by a German mathematician named Christoph Rudolph. By the 17th century, the 1600s, it was widely accepted. A lot of mathematicians were using that square root symbol, that radical sign. When an expression is written under a radical sign, we have a radical expression. These are all radical expressions. They're all radicands. So you can see we have a standalone number under it. That's a radicand. A variable could be one. We could even have addition or subtraction or division underneath the radical sign, and that's a radical expression. We've talked about this before. The square of any real number is always a positive number or zero. We have a positive 6 times a positive 6. It's going to make a positive 36, isn't it? And even if we have a negative 9 squared, negative 9 times negative 9 makes a positive 81. Since there's no real numbers that can be squared to get a negative number, radical expressions with negative radicands have no meaning in the real number system. We'd have to multiply a negative to a positive to get a negative, wouldn't we? And we can't do that when we're squaring, because when we're squaring, we're squaring the exact same number. All right? So two negatives are going to make a positive, no matter what we do. So all of these are not real numbers. We can't have a negative for a radicand. And the way we would read this one is the square root of the difference of 2 and 5. If we have 2 take away 5, that's going to give us a negative 3. That puts us back with these. It's not a real number. And we can evaluate the expression. This is read as the square root of the difference of 1 and x. If x is a 6, well, then we have 1 minus 6. That gives us a negative 5. It has a negative radicand, so it's got no meaning in the real number system. It's not a real number. For this one, it's the same thing as this. What values would make x true? What values would make this true? What values for x? Well, if x was less than or equal to a 1, it would make this true. So if it was less than a 1, it could be 0. 1 take away 0 would be 1. Yeah, square root of 1. That would work. If it was equal to 1, we'd have 1 minus 1. That's 0. Square root of 0 is 0. And the square root of negative x now remember, we've discussed this before. Don't let this confuse you. Just because it says negative x does not mean that it's like these guys, okay? It's not the same thing. We've talked about this before. x by itself could be a negative or positive number. So what we're doing is if x is a negative, if, if x equals negative 2, then that means we have a negative negative 2. See what I'm saying? So just because it says x doesn't mean it's a positive number. It could be a negative or positive. x is just taking the place of an unknown amount. We could have a square there, like in first grade, when it said 2 plus, and then it would have a square or a blank line. Think of the x as a blank line, OK? Don't think of it as a positive just because it doesn't have a negative sign in front of it. It's a blank line. So x could be a negative 2. It could be a negative 20. We don't know. So if it's smaller than 0, then it could be a negative 2. Then we'd have a negative of a negative 2, which give, would give us a positive, wouldn't it? I know that sounds confusing, but think of x as a blank line, not as a number, OK? So look at this one. What values for x would make this a real number? Well, this actually means x minus 1 times x minus 1, doesn't it? And x minus 1 squared is always non-negative, so any value for x will work. No matter what we multiply this by, no matter what we make this x and multiply it by, it's going to be a non-negative. So if we have 0, then we've got x equals 0, we've got 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, and 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. That's a negative 1 times a negative 1. That's a positive 1. See? It doesn't matter what we make x, it's going to end up becoming a non-negative. We start with a negative 4, negative 4 minus 1, 
times negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 times negative 5. That's a 25, and that's true in real. So x needs to be greater than or equal to 1, or x needs to be less than or equal to negative 1. And you can plug in numbers that follow this, and you'll see any value of x that's greater or equal to 1 or less or equal to negative 1 is going to make it a real number. All right? And remember, the square root of 0 is 0, isn't it? Now, what if you see this? You see a square root symbol over an x, but then the minus 1 is way out here. We would read this as the difference of the square root of x and 1. Our next video, 11.2b, we're going to talk about perfect square radicands. And if you want to see any of the previous videos, we did proof by contradiction, an indirect proof. And it wasn't with a proof table. We just went down the line and showed you how to prove something by proving the opposite is wrong. And we talked about these other topics here, and they're all in the description of this video, so you can just click on them and do a quick review or watch them if you haven't seen them before, all right? So let's talk about some perfect square radicands. Stick with me. We're going to get through this. We're almost done with Algebra 1. We've only got a couple more chapters to go. Bye.